Volume of Cones, 11.3b. There's seven previous videos for Chapter 11 that are in the description in the Geometry Playlist if you need them. In this chapter, we've been learning about the volume of prisms and cylinders. This is for the volume of cones. If it has a base area, B, and a height, H, our formula is V for volume equals one-third times the base times the height. It's the same formula for pyramids. We could also do the volume is equal to one-third pi r squared h, and this pi r squared would be the area of the circle times the height, the base times the height. We can find the volume of a cone with radius 5 centimeters and height 12 centimeters. So remember, the radius is half the diameter, so it's from the center point of the base to this side. Using the formula, we would do, for radius squared, we would do 5 squared, and that would be times the height 12. That would give us 25 times 12, which is 300. So we have 1 third pi times 300. That would be 100 pi centimeters cubed, which would be approximately 314 point 159 and so on, we could round this to the nearest tenth as 314 and two tenths centimeters cubed. We can find the volume of a cone with a base circumference of 21 centimeters and a height that is three centimeters less than twice the radius. So it'd be two times the radius minus three. We use the circumference to find the radius. Circumference is equal to 2 pi r, 2 times pi times the radius. That means we can divide both sides by 2 pi when we substitute in 21 pi for the circumference. This cancels out as a 1, and we get the radius is equal to 10.5 centimeters. And the second thing we do is use the radius to find the height. So our height was equal to 2 times the radius minus 3. We do 2 times 10.5. We subtract the 3, and we get 18 centimeters for our height. And the third thing we do is use the radius and height to find the volume. So we use our volume formula that the volume is equal to 1 third times pi times the radius squared times height. We know that the radius is now 10.5 centimeters, and we know that our height is 18 centimeters. We do the radius squared, 10.5 times 10.5, we get 110.25. We multiply it by the height, so here we have this equation. We can cancel this 3 out and reduce it by the 3. There's six threes in 18, so that's reduced to a six, and our fraction's gone. Now we have pi times 110.25 times six. That gives us 661.5 pi centimeters cubed, which, with our calculators, is approximately 2,078.2 centimeters cubed. So, to be a little more accurate, don't multiply it by 3.14 on your calculator. Hit the pi key. All right. Now take a look at this diagram. We can see that we have a length of 25 feet here and we've got a radius of 7 feet. If this cone were to be standing up on its base here, that would be its slant height, wouldn't it? But it's also a right triangle, isn't it? So that would be the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the height. We have 7 squared plus our height squared is going to equal 25 squared. So to find this, that would be like the b squared in the Pythagorean theorem, wouldn't it? And this 25 feet would be c, and this 7 feet would be a. We would get 7 times 7 is 49 plus 
h squared is equal to 625. We subtract 49 from each side of the equation, and we get that the height squared is equal to 576. We remove the two exponent by putting a radical sign around this side, and the square root of 576 is 24, so our height is 24 feet. Now that we know the height, we can find the volume. We use the radius of 7 feet and the height of 24 feet to find the volume. Using our formula for the volume of a cone, we put in 7 for our radius, so we have 7 squared, which is a 49. We can reduce using the 3. Our fraction is gone, and that becomes an 8. 49 times 8 is 392. So we have 392 pi feet cubed, which, using our calculators, is approximately 1,231.5 feet cubed. We can explore the effects of changing dimensions, the length, width, and height of a rectangular pyramid are multiplied by one-fourth. We can describe the effect on the volume. So our original dimensions, this 24 length, this 20 length, this 20 inch height, we would have a volume of one-third 24 times 20 times 20, that's one-third times 9,600, which is 3,200 inches cubed. If we multiply it by one-fourth, we would multiply each of the measures by a fourth. 24 times one-fourth is a six. 20 times one-fourth is five. And again, we have a five for our height. We do six times five times five, which is 150 times one-third is 50 inches cubed. So using our original dimensions, our volume was 3,200 inches cubed. When we multiplied it by one-fourth, our volume became 50 inches cubed. And 50 is equal to 1 64th times 3,200. If the length, width, and height of a rectangular pyramid are multiplied by one-fourth, the volume is multiplied by one-fourth cubed. One-fourth times one-fourth times one-fourth is one-sixty-fourth. This means if we have the volume for the original dimensions, we can just multiply it by one-sixty-fourth to know what the volume would be if it was multiplied by one-fourth. We can find the volume of a 3D composite figure that contains a cone and a cylinder and round to the nearest tenth. And the volume of the cylinder is, we can see the diameter is six centimeters, the radius is half the diameter, so our radius is going to be three. For the formula, we would do radius squared, so we're gonna do three squared, that's a nine, the height of our cylinder is 5 centimeters, so we're going to multiply it by the height 5. 9 times 5 is 45 pi centimeters cubed for the volume of this cylinder. Now we can do the cone. We would put our information in. For the radius squared, we'd have 3 squared again, because it's got the same radius as the cylinder. And if this is 10 centimeters, and this is 5 centimeters, then this must be 5 centimeters to make it 10. My drawing is not in proportion, but using these numbers, we would have 3 squared times 5, which would be 9 times 5. We can cancel out this 3 and that 9 as a 3. There's three threes and a 9. So now we just have pi times 3 times 5, which is 15 pi centimeters cubed. We found the volume of the cylinder is 45 pi centimeters cubed, and the volume of the cone is 15 pi centimeters cubed, and the volume of the composite figure is the sum of the volumes. It would be 45 pi plus 15 pi, which gives us 60 pi centimeters cubed, which on our calculators is approximately 188.5 centimeters cubed.
So we had a cylinder with a cone on top, and we found that it was approximately 188.5 centimeters cubed. But what is the volume of the composite figure if the cone is inverted into the cylinder? Well, instead of using the sum of the figures, we would find their difference. We knew the cylinder was 45 pi and the cone was 15 pi. If they had the same diameter, same radius, same height as this one, it's just the cone is now inverted, we would do 45 pi minus 15 pi, which is 30 pi centimeters cubed, which is approximately 94.2 centimeters cubed. The last part of the lesson, 11.3c, we're going to discuss cube roots. Then we're going to get into chapter 12, which is all about circles. We're going to start it off with 12.1a and talk about chord, secant, tangent, lines and segments that intersect circles. Remember to write your uh, formulas down in your notes where you can find them easily. I hope you're doing well. And I'll see you for the last part of Lesson 11.3. Bye.